want to welcome you guys to our new series that we are kicking off today called Summer Fun at the Movies. Uh, we haven't done this series in several years because nobody was going to the movies anymore. <laughs> but now the movies are back. People are actually going back to the movies. And at the same time, I don't know if you've noticed, but now you can actually rent movies that are in the theater. Have y'all seen that? It's kind of crazy. They're expensive, though. They're like $24.99. Like, whoa, okay, maybe I'll go to the movies and see it, right? Uh, so, so why movies? Why are we doing a series like this? Some of you just watch that trailer like, we, we doing this in church? What's going on? <laughs> Listen, when Jesus was here on the earth doing his, his ministry when he was 30 to 33 years old, he was known to be an incredible storyteller. Uh, he told parable, parables. And parables were uh, an ancient storytelling uh, thing that was popular in his day. And he used that to paint vivid pictures to draw people in and pull them in and parallel that and tie in scripture and tie in biblical truth. Fast forward to 2023, films are kind of like modern day parables. And, and so when we uh, see a movie, how many of you have ever seen a movie before and you, you said, man, I've seen that in the Bible or, or there's this parallel. Or God, God can speak to you through a movie. He can speak to you through a song. He can speak to you through real life situations and circumstances that happen every day. God can speak through all kinds of things. So for these next couple of weeks, we're going to look at some, some movies and pull out biblical truths and parallel them with some stories that we see in Scripture as they kind of line up together. And I believe the next few weeks, God is going to speak. God is going to show up here in new ways. God is going to remind us of some things that, uh, that we knew that we kind of forgot about or got a little bit foggy, right? So you just saw the trailer for the movie Hypnotic. And it just came out a couple of months ago. And in the movie, people can be triggered by a certain word, um, a certain, like, sound or action or even, like, a look, right? And, and, and it can kind of, the film calls it, then they move into a hypnotic construct. And they move into this mind state where what they think they're seeing is not fully real. And they begin to do some things that they normally wouldn't do if they were seeing things like they really were. Kind of sounds like sin, right? Temptation and sin can begin to like hypnotize us, put us almost into some kind of like spiritual mindset trance and pull us in and we'll do some stuff we would normally never do, right? And then sometimes we snap out of it. We're like, oh, my goodness, like, what was I thinking? How many of y'all know sin can be intoxicating, y'all? It can pull us down the wrong path really quick, and it can destroy our lives. Let me remind you, there's a spiritual enemy that's trying to wreck your life. The last couple of years, if your eyes have been open, uh, you've been able to notice the, the spiritual battle for our lives. It's got intensified for our souls and for the souls of our children. I mean, the Bible clearly states that our spiritual enemy, Satan, is out to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. He's out to get us, y'all. It's real. How many of y'all know that? It's, it's a real thing, y'all. Um, he's trying to steal your God-given purpose and hypnotize you with sin and sinful pleasures and all kinds of stuff. So today I want to open up our eyes and, and remind us of that today. We're going to give you guys some tools to fight this battle some tools to heal when you fall, when you mess up, and some tools to even heal when people around you may fall and it directly impacts you. So I want to invite you to stand with me around the room. If you're worshiping online, what's up to y'all? You can stand up from the couch if you can as well. We're going to open up with our main scripture text that we're going to look at today. It's from uh, the book of 2 Samuel in the Old Testament. Starting in chapter 11, we're going to look at verse 1. It says this, it says, in the spring of the year, when kings normally go out to war, David sent Joab and the Israelite army to fight the Ammonites. They destroyed the Ammonite army, and they laid siege to the city of Rabbath. However, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. Watch this. Late one afternoon, after his midday rest, David got out of bed and was walking on the roof of the palace. And as he looked over the city, he noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. And he sent somebody. He said, said, hey, Kenny, go find out who that lady is over there. That one right over there. Stays at 37 Broad Street right over there. Go find out who she is, right? And so they came back and they told him, they said, she is Bathsheba, 
daughter of Iliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. She's married. But then David, what did he do? He sent messengers to get her. And when she came to the palace, he slept with her. She had just completed the purification rites after having her menstrual period, and then she returned home. Later, when Bathsheba discovered that she was pregnant, she sent David a message saying, what? I'm pregnant, and you the father. What you going to do about that, king? Listen, this is a biblical example of somebody that got, like, hypnotized by sin, and there was a quick consequence. She got pregnant. But instead of standing up and, like, admitting his fault and trying to make things right, what did he do? He tried to cover it up. And things got worse and worse and worse. We're going to look at that today because many times we can fall into this same exact situation and we can trace it back. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning. It's no accident how you have lined this up today. God, we prayed over six months ago about the series to start on June the 25th. This is what you put in front of us. And then several weeks ago, uh, we chose what movies were going to be on what days, and you knew what movie we needed to kick this series off for the season that our church would be in and some of the situations that have happened here and in our lives and even what people are personally going through, God, that's how I know you're real. I continue to watch you line things up and set things up in a way that we never could know about. You're all-knowing. And so, God, we pray that you know each heart and each mind and each situation and each family that's physically here today, that's virtually here today, you know exactly where they're at and what they need to hear today. God, give us what we need. Give us the tools to get through the summer of 2023. And not just to get through it, not just to survive, but God, to thrive, to grow, to go to a new level in you. God, we even feel like these last few minutes in this beginning of this worship service, we feel like the lid has kind of been lifted off in some ways. And God, you're going to show up in new ways and blow our minds this summer. So God, help us to lean in in these next few minutes. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. 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 You guys can be seated. So how did David, think about it for a minute. If you know the story of David, this is like David, the dude that killed the giant Goliath. He's known as a man of God. He's known as a a godly king. How How did David, this man of God that did amazing things, how did he like mess up like this? Like this brother was known for integrity. He was known for honor. He was known for truth. He was known for like doing the right thing. How did he fall into temptation? How did he get hypnotized by sin? Like he's a smart guy. Like he's got tons of wisdom, right? So we're going to break down the story today. And we're also going to look how it is parallel in a lot of our lives. Because all of us have fallen into some sin before at some points when we were like, man, what was I thinking, right? And and so what you have to do, like, is reverse engineer it to say, okay, how did I get here, and how can I learn from this mistake? A lot of us, we just get in the middle, we're like, duh, how did I get here? And then we just keep going. You got to learn from our mistakes and look at it. And so we're going to look at this story and kind of break down this text. And I encourage you guys, take some notes today. Follow along in the Crossover app. If you haven't downloaded the app, go ahead and download that. Um, it's in the Apple store, the Android store. We love everybody here. We love all the people here. We multi-ethnic, multi-generational, multi-class, multi-phone. <laughs> Crossover's for the people. So here's the first thing if you're taking some notes today. Type it in or write it down as we look at this story, at this text. We can fall when we're in the wrong place. Somebody say wrong place. Wrong place. Wrong place. So in the beginning of chapter 11, it says in the spring, when kings normally go into battle, what did did David decide to do this spring? He decided, nah, y'all go ahead. I'm going to fall back. I'm going to just chill at the palace. I'm going to take a spring break. Y'all ever hear those regret stories about spring break going wild? This is the first one in history right here. (laughs) Right here in 2 Samuel. Chapter 11, the first recording of it, right? 
Uh, he wasn't even supposed to be at home if he was doing his job, fulfilling his kingly duties. But he got comfortable. Like, nah, everything is good. It, it's cool. And many of us, if we trace back sometimes that we fell back into sin, it was because we got comfortable. Somebody say comfortable. We got comfortable. We said, oh, no, nah, Pastor T, I could go back there. I haven't been there in a while, but I'm good now. I'm mature. I'm mature in things now. I can, I can handle that now. But God told you, you don't need to go there anymore, like ever again. It's like, nah, don't go there. Um, I have a rule that I follow, and, and we require our leadership team to follow this as well, and that's that we don't actually hang out alone with somebody of the opposite sex. So I'm not going to ride alone in the car with another woman. Even if I'm not attracted to her, even if I'm like, oh, that's just so-and-so. Like, I'm not going to go to lunch with another woman. That's not my wife, my daughters, or my sister. And I have one blood sister. Okay, let me, let me clear that up because some people are like, oh, that's, a, that's just my sister in Christ. <laughs> that's just my brother. Oh, he's like my brother. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, then I fell with my brother. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't even go there. And so here's the thing. It's not that I don't trust myself or trust the other person necessarily. Because then you have some people like, oh, that's, 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 that's being too legalistic. No, I'm protecting my heart. I'm protecting my calling. I'm protecting what God is. Don't fall into that. Ah, you too. Hold up. You got to protect yourself. The Bible, first of all, the Bible says this. It says, abstain from the appearance of evil. If y'all see me at a restaurant somewhere with a, a, a lady that's not my wife, come on, that look a little sus. So first of all, that, that's, that's confusing. That, that's a, and even if that person, like I'm not attracted to that person, I lowered my standards now, and then it could open the door of the enemy, and I might do it with somebody else down the road. And maybe there is some attraction with that person, then that's, that's how the enemy does it. He just lowers our standards and gets us, gets us comfortable. Somebody say comfortable. So be careful. The enemy, y'all, he's slick. He's smooth. He just slides in, and soon he'll hypnotize you, get you in that hypnotic construct, and then you get intoxicated in some ways with, with sin and temptation. You end up doing some things that you would never do, right? And so whatever that is for you, like what are the places you don't need to go? There's a number of places on my list, but what does that look like for you? Where's the places you don't need to go? What's the wrong place? It might be somebody's house that's a friend of yours from back in the day. Maybe you don't need to go hang out at their house anymore because you know they're a bad influence. You always end up doing some stuff and saying some stuff, get caught up in some drama, end up maybe smoking a little, little something, something, that's something, because they always got that good stuff, and uh, I don't do that anymore. Oh, oh, well, come on, I'm being real today. Come on. Listen, I'm ready to fight, y'all. I'm ready to fight because there, there is families in this church that are broken up today because they're like, it started with us smoking weed together. And it started down the wrong path. We got to spot that stuff. We got to hold each other accountable. I shared this with our leadership team this morning, our volunteers. I said, man, everybody's like, oh, I don't want to judge. I don't want to judge nobody. The Bible says only God can judge. That's taken out of context. Because Paul says in 2 Corinthians, we don't judge outsiders, but people that are inside of the family, we got to hold them accountable. We are responsible for them. Robert, I'm responsible for you, Lee, I'm responsible for you if I see you doing something that you shouldn't be doing. I'm going to check you on it because I love you. And your wife will be happy about it. She'll be like, go ahead, Pastor T, get them. Right? <laughs> but we got to do that for one another. And sometimes in this culture now, we just get too quiet because we don't want to get nobody's business. We don't want nobody to cancel us. Come on, guys. We family. We got to fight for each other. I'm going off script a little bit, but God's telling me to just, listen, some of you, you don't need to go to Ybor City on a Friday night. That's not the place for you. You don't need to go back to that. Some of you, you don't need to go to the sports bar because you end up drinking too much and then you do foolish stuff. 
Whatever that wrong place is for you, stay away. It's not worth it. It's not worth the destruction that it can bring in the long run because you just got too comfortable. Look at what happened with David. Second thing we see in this story, in this text, we can fall when we look at the wrong things. David's on the rooftop of the palace. Remember, he's not even supposed to be there. He's supposed to be out with his soldiers, right? He's there on the rooftop, and he's up there, and his eyes lock in with this lady that he sees two blocks away. You can bring me those binoculars, like, you know, and he's checking his lady out. He should have never even been there in the first place. In this movie, Hypnotic, that we just saw the, the intro for, there's this guy in the movie, his name is Dev uh, Del Rain, Lev Del Rain. And this guy, he's got, he's got this lighter, and he does this thing with the lighter where he could just, like, light it. And, man, he's like the master hypnotic guy. And he could just, like, make a sound or do something or lock eyes with somebody, and then people are, like, locked in. And he can tell them, like, whatever to do, whatever to think. In the movie, he calls some people to go after the main characters and try to kill them, and, and he can convince somebody, like, it's hot. And suddenly, like, they'll start taking their clothes off right in the middle of the street and, like, all kinds of crazy stuff, right? And so, listen, y'all, sin can cause us to do some things we really don't want to do. Sin can be mesmerizing. It can be kind of, like, hypnotizing. It could be, like, my wife said a few weeks ago, she said, sin fascinates before it assassinates. Oh, yeah, it's fascinating. Ooh, look at it. Ooh, watch out. It's going to get you. Like, don't play with it. Don't mess with it, y'all. And listen, I know we live in Florida, and it's hot in the summertime, and there's a lot of people out there that don't wear as much clothes as they should. <laughs> and so you're going to see some things in Florida. I know a lot of y'all are new. First summer in Florida, you're like, oh, my goodness, look at people. Woo, oh. Listen, but you have a choice, men and women. I know men are more visually stimulated, but women can be as well. We all have a choice to, like, you're going to see it, but are you going to bounce your eyes and look away? Somebody say bounce. Bounce, bounce your eyes and bounce. Like, <laughs> some of y'all might be find yourself in the wrong place. You're looking around like, oh, my, oh, Lord. <laughs> I need, I got to go. Right? We got to be careful of the things that our eye gates and our ear gates are looking at. And, and it's, it's so much beyond just real life. Many times it's this right here, y'all. Y'all on social media and some picture pops up and you start going down the rabbit hole. Don't click the link. Look at somebody and say, don't click the link. <laughs> you weren't planning on going and looking at a porn website, but now suddenly you're on a porn website. You're like, how did I get here? Because you just, you didn't protect your eyes. You didn't guard your eyes and guard your heart, y'all. Ask God to help you look away. In the Old Testament, Job, he said, I made a covenant with my eyes not to lust, look lustfully at a young woman. We got to make that commitment, men and women, that we're not going to look at other people in a lustful way. And God, give me the discipline that when I see something that, that this, you know, kind of like attempting me, I'm going to look away. I'm going to bounce my eyes. And guess what? God can help you with that. We talked a lot about creating neural pathways in your brain, in your mind. You can rewire your brain. Looking at porn and looking at the wrong things rewires your brain in a negative way, and that becomes the default of how you always begin to think. But God created our minds in an amazing way, and you can rewire your brain and start to look at the right stuff, and you can close those old pathways and those old doors, and you can begin to have pure eyes. Somebody say pure eyes. Say, man, I'm going to save myself for my spouse, for my future spouse, my future boo, whatever it is for you, right? But let's take this even beyond sexual temptation because I know that's not the only thing our eyes wrestle with, or that might not be the main thing of where you're at right now. Many of us, we struggle with material lust, and we look at what other people have, and we start to compare, and then we feel bad, and, and, and we can get jealous, and we can get depressed, and we can start scheming in an unhealthy way, maybe even, any, let's be real, an illegal way to get stuff that you really can't afford right now. And, and so, man, I know we got some people with some stories in here, some histories. I know I did. I used to be caught up in that, and I would do illegal things to get stuff that I couldn't really afford. 
And when you do that kind of stuff, when you get into that mindset that's unhealthy, you cross that line and it goes into sin. So be careful what you're looking at. Nothing wrong with admiring some things. But when it crosses into, oh, man, i got to have that, man, it's dangerous, y'all. Third thing we see in this story, uh, we fall deeper. Somebody say deeper. deeper. When we try to cover up the truth. Now, now watch this, y'all. King David got this woman pregnant, and instead of owning it and admitting the mistake and trying to make things right, what does he do? He tries to cover it up. And it gets worse and worse, y'all. So he finds out, like, like, who's her husband again? Oh, he's in, he's in battle. He's one of my soldiers. Tell you what, let, let's call him back. Let's call him back to the palace. Brings him back off the field. He don't have a relationship with the king. He's like, why the king calling me over here? Like, oh, man, right? He, you know. So he calls him in. Hey, man, what's up? You're doing a great job, bro. Awesome, man. You know, listen, hey, I, how's everything going out there? Oh, it's, go, it's going good? Cool. Hey, man, thank you for the report. Hey, just why don't you go home for a couple days before you go out to the battlefield, man? Thank you for the information. Right, so his mindset is like, hey, she's newly pregnant. Nobody knows right now. She ain't rocking the baby bump yet. So if I can get her husband to come off the battlefield and go home Ain't seen her in a couple months. You know what's going to happen. He missed. They miss each other. They're going to be intimate. And then, like, everybody's going to think that it's his, it's his child. And I'm in the clear. I'm free. Whew, whew. But Uriah is such a stand-up guy. He's like, nah, king, I can't, I can't go lay with my wife when my soldiers are out there on the battlefield right now. And they're in danger. And, like, I just I can't do that. That wouldn't be right. That doesn't sit right with me. You know, David's like, well, well, you know, you've been doing a good job. You know, you've been killing it out there. It's okay. Like, I'll give you permission. Nah, I can't do it, king. Right? Almost like it's a test, right? Like, you testing me, king? Like, I ain't doing it, right? And, and so, like, the next day, the, the scripture says he tried to get him drunk. Man, maybe if I just get him drunk a little bit. Kenny, bring that good stuff for him. You know, we're going to try to get him drunk and then send him. You take him, take him to his house, and then something will happen, right? He got him drunk. He still wouldn't go. He laid there like, you know, in the courtyard of the palace and didn't want to go home. So the king's finally like, man, I don't know what's going on. I got to come up with a, another idea. This is not working. That leads to the next point, the next part of the story. Number four, we fall even deeper when we use our power to manipulate others. Woo. Look at verse 14, y'all. Story continues. So the next morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and gave it to Uriah to deliver. Now, hold up. Let me stop right there. That was so foul. He gives him a letter, his death sentence, and says, here, go deliver that to your supervisor, your commander. It's your death letter. He doesn't even know. He's just like, yes, sir. Yes, king. Awesome, man. I got you. And he's holding a letter in his hand that he doesn't realize that is his death sentence. Man, that's foul. That's foul. That's the level that you can stoop to when you get in this hypnotic construct of sin, right? And it says, that letter instructed Joab, station Uriah on the front lines where the battle is the fiercest, then pull back so that he will be killed. So Joab assigned Uriah to a spot close to the city wall where he knew the enemy's strongest men were fighting. And when the enemy soldiers came out of the city to fight, Uriah the Hittite was killed along with several Israelite soldiers. Man. David used his position of power and influence to have Bathsheba's husband killed. That's so wicked. That's so evil. I mean, it's just dripping with evil. It's like, man, how could you do that? And so if you look at it, this story moved from sexual sin to a scheme to cover it up, and that didn't work. So now let's use our power to commit murder. Now listen, King David, this man of God, he didn't plan for this to happen. He wasn't like, oh man, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to stay home and have a spring break. And I'm going to get a girl pregnant and then kill her husband. <laughs> like, that was never even a thought in his mind. He would never think that he would do something like that. Like, he was trying to, you know, honor God. But 
again, y'all, he got comfortable. He got comfortable. It started by him being in the wrong place and then with the wrong look, got locked in, got tempted, fell into sin, right? Led to adultery, then an attempted cover up that didn't work. Then he used his power to hide it and commit murder. See the steps? It's always steps. It's an old saying that say, sin will take you farther than you plan to go. <laughs> and it'll cause you to pay much more than you thought you were going to pay. It does it every time, y'all. Every time. So I, I know some of you guys right now, you're like, well, Pastor T, you know, I don't have the power of a king. So this part really doesn't apply to me. Hold up. Wait a minute. We all have some power in our lives. Let me say this. Let me switch that word to help some of you guys because you're still stuck on that, I believe. Let's switch that word power to influence. You all have influence on some people around you. You do. And sometimes we can use our influence to manipulate people to cover stuff up. People do that all the time, even if you're not a king, even if you're not a queen, right? We got some influence and, and listen, when we do that, y'all, it gets deeper and deeper and uglier and uglier as the lies pile on top of the lies. And it's layer after layer after layer. There was a season in my life when I still lived at home with my parents and I wasn't living for Jesus and I was doing some things that I shouldn't have been doing. And listen, I, I was in this season where the lies just kept kind of piling on top of the other you ever been in that season where there was so many lies, sometimes you got yourself confused? And you're like, oh, what did I tell that person? Oh, shoot, I messed up, <laughs> right? But eventually, it's going to come out. It's going to get exposed. Let me remind you, the Bible says that's what, what is done in darkness is going to be exposed into the light, y'all. It's going to be exposed. It's just a matter of time. And sometimes you can think that you're fooling God. Sometimes you can think that you're fooling everybody else because, oh, nobody knows I'm getting away with it. <laughs> nobody knows I'm smooth. I'm, and some of you are really good at it. But listen, other people might not notice it right away. It could even be years. But God knows. God sees everything you're doing. God sees everything you're scheming. God sees everything that you're thinking and planning and all those things. And in God's timing, he's going to reveal it. He's going to expose it. Every time, it'll happen. It'll eventually get exposed. We even see now that sometimes people's sin gets exposed after they die. And that's when it's really tough. When it's like there's, there's no answers or no explanation or no why after that. And it's like, man, it's like, man, he sees everything and knows everything. And so in his timing, he's going to bring it to light. And listen, the longer you hide it, the worse the consequences can be. Listen. I'm going to be super real today, y'all. Our church is going through a tough 14 days by some people that hid some stuff, right? But God chose to expose it to the light because God said, I'm not going to let that happen at Crossover Church anymore. I'm moving there. Lives are being changed. I got big plans for this community, this family. And God gives opportunities for us to come forward and be like, God, I, I'm sorry, I, I confess. And if we don't, he's going to eventually expose it. And God knew that this message was going to fall today so our church could be in a season of waking up and realizing let's learn from this and let's heal from this. And let's move forward now. Let's hold each other accountable on a new level. God has big plans for this community, y'all. So here's your homework. Here's your homework this week to read 2 Samuel. Chapter 12, see what happened to King David when it was revealed. It got revealed and exposed in a crazy way. He didn't confess. Somebody else came and read his email up and down. And the consequences were cray-cray. You can go ahead and read it. I'm not even going to give the details, right? But, but I do want to give you some tools today, some steps before we get out of here, y'all. Uh, how do we heal and get restored after we fall and we get hypnotized by sin? I want to give you a couple important steps. Number one, if you're taking notes, number one is repent. To God. Repent. That doesn't mean I'm sorry because I got caught, if that's the case. But repent, biblically, it means a turning of the heart 
a turning of the mind, and I'm no longer going to follow my own path. I'm no longer going to follow my own thoughts, but I'm now going to follow God's path for my life, and I'm going to try to now uh, think the thoughts of Christ. I'm going to try to be more Christ-like. I'm going to go down that road of becoming more like Jesus, sanctification. I I'm all in. I'm locked into that, right? You got to repent to God. Number two, be accountable with trusted believers. You need some godly brothers or sisters in your life that you can confess to. Listen, if you're married, you need to be with some other married people that you're confessing with, right? You don't need to get advice from people that haven't been married before, right? Like, like so that, that's a real thing. Some of y'all getting advice from the wrong people. Oh, they're a Christian, but, but they're, they're telling you, like, the single path. And, and that's not what you're supposed to be hearing right now. You need some trusted, godly believers. Use wisdom. You can, like, confess some things to them. You can be accountable. You can pray with them. They can give you some godly advice, advise you in your healing process. Here's the third one, y'all. Increase your personal time that you spend with God. Carve out time daily to pray to fast, to read scripture, to, to maybe journal, to spend time in God's presence. Romans 12, 2 says we have to renew our mind. When? Daily. Because there's a battle every day. We have to renew our minds. This week we're starting a seven-day fast. This is on our website, crossoverchurch.org slash prayer. We have a seven-day fast. We are starting tomorrow. I know that came up really quick, but right now is the time for us to press in. As we start the summer, just for these next seven days, that God is going to give our church a time of renewal. Somebody say renewal. renewal. He's going to renew us. He's going to get us ready for this next season. Uh, every morning at 615 on our Facebook uh, page, which is Crossover 813, if you want to tap in, uh, we're going to be every morning. We're going to be giving you guys uh, a devotional, some prayer to kick your day off with Monday through Friday. Then Saturday and Sunday, it'll be at 915 so y'all can sleep in a little bit. But this, this guide is on the website. I encourage you guys, let, let's jump in. Let's go deeper this summer. Here's the fourth thing. Get more involved in your church community. Somebody say lean in. Yeah. Lean in. Be here every time that we gather. Not just once a month. Not just whenever it fits in your schedule. Listen, sometimes, sometimes you take for granted what you have. There's a group of people that are here from Pennsylvania today. Shout out to Dr. V and some of the squad over here. <laughs> Chayla and... They were here yesterday at the, the women's event. Shout out to my wife and the whole chosen team. Give it up for them. It was amazing. They had close to 100 ladies here yesterday. But when they come here, they're like, oh, my gosh, I wish I lived in Tampa. I wish I would be in the front row every week. This is awesome. But some of us that live here, we're like, yeah, crossover's cool. I go when I can. Listen, be here every time we gather. Lean in. Get plugged in. Get involved. Start to serve on a team. When you start to serve on a team, it activates. The Holy Spirit activates something inside of you because you're not just thinking about yourself. You're thinking about others. You're using your talent and your time and your gifts to serve others, and it activates something inside of you. That's why we call our volunteers here activators. And if you want to become an activator, just go to the website. We'll get you plugged in to whatever your passion is. Listen, everybody, you're part of this church. You could serve once a month, at least just once a month for an hour or so. If this is really your church, and then watch as you build new friendships and relationships and God begins to do some new things inside of you because you, you activate. All, all the men in the house, where's my men? Make some noise. Fellas, 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 yeah. We, we got our fight club ministry. It's happening this Friday in the gym, 7 p.m. Come and tap in with the fellas. We need godly accountability. All the ladies, where's all the ladies at? Go ahead, say your chosen thing. All right, there you go, there you go. So you already know, I ain't even saying nothing else about that. Listen, if you're a young adult that's between 18 and 29, today after 1145 service, we're going to feed you free lunch. We do that on the fourth Sunday of every month. There's a, a great community of young adults that are part of our church. Tap into that. There, there's so many different ways to tap in and get more involved here. Here's the last one, y'all. Number five is consider Christian counseling. Consider Christian counseling. I believe the urban community is finally starting to break. Pastor Christopher, I believe it's starting to happen. That stigma about counseling and therapy, right? There's been this stigma over our community for a long time to be like, ah, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm not crazy. 
But sometimes it's necessary because you've never been the age you are right now with the circumstances you have right now. And sometimes we need some tools to navigate that and figure that out. We need a, a third party, a professional, a biblical Christian counselor that can give us some tools in our tool belt to help us grow in this next season and stay balanced, y'all. Our church has a list of Christian counselors that you could tap into. We have some great counselors that are right here that are part of our church that are doing amazing work. Very last thing I want to address, y'all, is, is what happens when somebody close to us falls and it impacts us. What happens then? First of all, we pray for that person. Pastor Christopher read Galatians 6 last week where we gently restore that person. If they're willing, we gently restore them. We hold them accountable if they're willing. There also might be some new boundaries that you need to put up depending on the situation of that relationship and what happened. Because, listen, God doesn't want you to continue to get hurt and have pain with somebody else if they're not listening, right? So, sometimes there, there needs to be some boundaries, and it's okay. L look at me real quick. Look at, look at me. Everybody look at me. You are not the Savior. But we think that sometimes. We're like, oh, Pastor Tommy, man, if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. They won't listen to anybody else. Stop. Stop. You're not God. God is the Savior. God can use whoever, whatever. He's God. He doesn't need you. He uses us many times, but sometimes he's going to tell you, like, fall back. He's going to release you, and you need to let go and pray from a distance maybe. So I want you to be aware of that as well. He can use anything or anyone. He can even use a movie to speak to somebody and bring conviction. Spoiler alert, in the hypnotic movie at the end, uh, it's revealed that the main character is actually in a hypnotic construct. Everything that he's seeing is not fully real. And they kind of walk him through everything and they're showing him and there's green screens and all kinds of things. And he's like, oh my goodness. And they put him in that to try to find out where he actually hid his daughter. And they kept running him through this simulation again and again to try to find out where his daughter was. But at the end of the day, he wakes up to what's finally going on and he was trying to protect his daughter, protect his kids. Some of us need to wake up and realize there's all this sin and there's an agenda and there's stuff going on around us to grab our souls and take us down the wrong path and our family members and our kids. And we gotta wake up and see, man, I gotta protect my heart and my mind and the people around me. Because it's so easy to fall, so easy to fall. Listen, God is waking some of y'all up. Some of y'all have been stuck in that sinful mindset. You're thinking like, oh, Pastor T, this is, this is going to make me happy. And I'm just trying to, I've been depressed and so that's why I'm doing this. And, and some of you have maybe thought that God isn't reachable. Or, or you've messed up so many times and you've tried before and you kept falling. And like, man, I just, I don't even know. I just came to church today. Or I just, somebody brought me today or whatever. But God brought you here today to speak to you, to remind you he loves you. Some of you are in the middle of it right now. You need to step out of it. Some of you right now, you need to heal today. Maybe you've stepped out of it, but there's brokenness. You're like, God, what do I do next now? I, I, I want to get closer to you again. I want to never make sure I do that again. Some of you are maybe in a situation where somebody around you fell into sin and it impacted you and it hurt you. You're like, man, how do I heal from that? Listen, the Bible says God is close to the brokenhearted. If your heart is broken today, God is right here. He's right here. I want you to bow your heads around the room today. I want to ask the leaders that are here and some of the staff if you could come up to the front. If you're here today and you could admit that God's talking to you today on some level, that's you today. I want you to just lift up your hand if that's you. Awesome. Awesome. We're going to take these last few moments of the service today. And we got a couple of minutes. I intentionally, intentionally ended just a little bit shorter so we can have some time to pray and kind of seal this today. And we're going to worship the next few minutes. 
and just sing this song, God loves us. He loves us. He's got a plan for us. If you want to worship in your seat, do some business with God, pray. But if you want to get prayed for, some of our prayer team, some of our leadership team is down here in the front. If you want to come get prayed for, we're going to be available for the next few minutes. Then we're going to close out. We're going to pray together. So, uh, so let's worship. If you want to get prayed for, just make your way down here.